Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the English with Gemma podcast. I'm Gemma, and I'm so happy that you're here. So today I'm really excited about our topic. It's something that I think everybody can, you know, find useful. And I think it's something that we all sometimes struggle with, especially when learning a language or learning anything really. So today's topic is how to form healthy habits and really stick to them. And I am not an expert on this topic at all. <laughs> I just want to, you know, put that out there as a disclaimer. But I did read, I actually read it twice, a book called Atomic Habits by James Clear. Um, this book, I think, has been published for a few years. I read it about four years ago, and I really, I really liked this book. It, I think it's the reason why I, I still have these habits that I do daily. I basically, every single day for the last four years, more or less, ever since I read the book, I journal, meditate, and practice yoga every single morning. And, you know, of course, there have been mornings where I've been sick or really, really tired and I've missed a day. But I try to never miss, you know, two consecutive days. I'll always just miss like one day and then try to do it the next day. And a lot of people think that that's really hard to be consistent like that, but not if you use the rule of atomic habits, which is basically doing something a little bit, but doing it consistently. And then hopefully over time, implementing it in a bigger way into your life. So I just do five to 10 minutes of journaling, five minutes of guided meditation using my app, which is Insight Timer for anyone who might be interested. And then yoga, it depends. Sometimes I'll just do 10 minutes. Sometimes I'll do 30 minutes. It just kind of depends on my mood. So the rule is not, you know, do all these habits for a specific amount of time. The rule is just be consistent. So yeah, I'm really excited to talk about this. Um, I am going to have notes. So if you're watching, you might see me glancing down at my computer screen. Um, I just, it's a big topic and I want to make sure that I get it right and that I cover everything that I want to talk about. So yeah, let's let's get into it properly. So basically... I'm going to be talking about mostly how to implement atomic habits into English learning, but it can really be implemented into any area of your life. So really, it's super important to implement habits when it comes to learning, because if you're not studying English every day, or just regularly in general, it's really hard to make progress. I often get students asking me, Gemma, why am I not making progress and seeing the results that I want to see? And it's often just due to a lack of consistency. Because realistically, if you're having classes with me once or twice a week, let's say three hours tops, most people are just doing one hour, you know, that's really not enough English exposure and practice in order to really progress in the ways that most of you want to, which is as fast as possible, right? So we're going to talk about how small, consistent efforts can lead to really significant progress. And I promise you this method is effective because I've done it myself. 
And it has made a really positive impact in my life. I think I would be crazy without my daily meditation and yoga and all those things that I try to do. Um, and, you know, like I said, it doesn't just have to be about English learning. It can be about many different things. So basically, atomic, the word atomic comes from atoms, right? Tiny little particles that make up everything that we can see um, and that we can't see also. So if you think about it, atomic habits means a really, really small habit and then kind of building on that and making them bigger, like I mentioned earlier. So that's what atomic habits kind of means. It's about small changes that will compound over time to produce really, really significant results. So the first thing that I want to talk about, um, again, I'm not taking credit for any of these ideas. I am basically just reiterating what I learned in the Atomic Habits book. It has been quite a few years since I read the book, so I apologize if <laughs> um, some of the information is a little bit off. I'm just going from memory and also my notes that I made. So the first thing is habit stacking. Basically, habit stacking is integrating new habits into your life onto pre-existing routines. So what I mean by that is it's a lot easier to implement a new habit into your life when you stack, when you put it on top of another habit that you already do. Um, so for example, let's just think of something really basic like brushing your teeth. So if you are going to habit stack... And the habit that you want to implement is, let's say, five minutes of English learning, whether that's listening to a podcast, a section of a podcast, reading a few pages of a book in English, uh, listening to the news in English or the radio or whatever. I don't know if anybody listens to the radio anymore or if it's just podcasts, <laughs> but you know what I mean. Something very small, let's say five minutes of any type of English studying. Um, and what you want to do is you brush your teeth and then you say, okay, I've brushed my teeth and now it's time for, for my five minutes of Duolingo or whatever five minutes of studying you want to do. And when you stack your habits like that, it makes it a lot easier because your brain is then programmed like a robot, basically. Our brains like patterns, right? So when you say, Okay, brushing my teeth, and now you automatically know it's time for your next habit. So I actually have stacked my morning habits. It always goes journaling, yoga, meditating. Journaling gets all my thoughts out. Um, the yoga gets all the movement out that I need to do, and then the meditation kind of calms down my mind. So that's why I stack them in that way. Do I always do it like that? No, maybe sometimes I switch it up. But the most important thing, it's not necessarily the order. It's just that those habits are stacked, that they all go together. My trio of habits, they come together. And I know in my brain that the, those like 30 minutes in the morning, those are for my habits. So that is the first um, kind of thing that you can do, habit stacking. So next I want to talk about something that's interesting um, and it kind of can be used, well, it comes from bad habits often, but you can use the same format to create good habits. I'll, I'll explain more in a second. So what I'm talking about is called the habit loop. So a loop is like a cycle, okay? Something that goes in a circle and that repeats. So I am going to check my notes out for this because it's a little bit technical. But the habit loop goes cue, craving, response, reward. So let's have a look at like a bad habit. So let's say um, I'm bored. That's my cue. A cue is like a trigger like something that starts something else. So let's say I'm bored, that's my cue. 
My craving is to scroll mindlessly on Instagram or any social media. And I'm sure you guys can relate to that. So my cue is feeling bored. My craving is I want to scroll. I'm craving. I'm wanting something. I want to go on social media. My response is probably going on social media, <laughs> scrolling on Instagram. And then the reward in my brain is dopamine and serotonin and all of those hormones that we get when we use social media um, or when we do something like eating um, something sugary or anything that creates that dopamine response in your brain that tells you like, yes, this is a reward. I should do this again. And that is how you create habit loops. Now, if you can identify your cues and your rewards with a bad habit, you can do the same thing with a good habit. So your cue and rewards can relate to studying English. So your cue could be setting a reminder on your phone every day, let's say 3 p.m. You set a reminder on your phone, time to study English. That's your cue. And then you have your craving, you have your response. Maybe you don't crave studying English, but you know what I mean. The response would be doing your 10 minutes of English studying. And then your reward can be whatever you want. You choose, treat yourself, find a reward after you complete a studying session. And once you create this, this good, this positive habit loop, you're telling your brain that this is something good and something that you want to do again. So that is habit loops, and hopefully that will help you to implement a good habit into your life. And it doesn't just have to be studying English, like I've been saying this whole time. When I do my yoga, um, when I do my three habits in the morning, I often will make myself a matcha latte after as my reward because I really like I really like matcha. Um, so yeah, you choose your reward but make sure you do have something at the end. And it's better if it's not like an unhealthy reward, like I'm going to eat a donut every time I study English, you know? I mean, I'm not telling you how to live your life, but try to make it a healthy reward if you if you can. <laughs> um, so the next thing, oh, before I move on to my next topic, actually, I just want to say once again, of course, me giving you these kind of really concise versions of the book and the tips from Atomic Habits, it's great. I really, really encourage you to read the book if you can. Um, you can, you know, find it on a PDF version. You can probably find it on, you definitely can find it on Amazon. You can order it. I'm sure they have an audio book version if that's your thing. And that can even be part of your English studying, right? Listening to an audiobook or even reading the book because it, it's in English. So you can learn how to create healthy habits and learn English at the same time. Um, okay. So yeah, basically read the book if you can, because like I said, I'm not an expert and I'm just giving you my notes, concise notes on this book. Okay. So the next thing is called the two minute rule. So basically, we want to start very small. I know I sound like a broken record and I'm repeating myself a lot, but when you start a habit, you want to make sure that it takes less than two minutes to complete at the beginning, okay? Then once you do it for a week or two weeks and you've really got it implemented into your daily routine, then you can start expanding the time. You can go to five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, okay? But at the beginning, we want to break down studying into small, manageable tasks like reviewing flashcards for two minutes or listening to a short English podcast clip, not even an entire podcast, just two minutes of it or two pages of a book, okay? We want to start really, really small because I see my students make this mistake all the time. They get they get really motivated and they say like, oh, I just, I wanna make progress and I, I'm gonna study English for one hour every single day. Well, that's great that you have that motivation and you're excited, but we have to be realistic and you know, realistically, most people do not have one hour of their day to sit down and study English. 
you know, we have jobs, you might have kids, your partner, your hobbies, you have loads of different things in your life. And we're all very ex extremely busy these days. And when you do that, when you say, I'm going to study English for one hour every single day, and then when you can't actually achieve that, you start to feel bad, you feel like a failure, you're like, oh, I'm, I'm the worst, why can't I study for one hour every day? That's because you're, you're going too big at the beginning, right? That's crazy. Like, if you can study for one hour a day, amazing, more power to you, that's great. But, you know, most of us don't have that time um, and we have different priorities. So, you know, just start really, really small. This is how you really create habits, starting small. It does not have to be a lot of time and then you can build on it, but you can't implement an hour of a habit into your life. It just, it doesn't work at least in my experience. If it works for you, that's great. But I think most of you will understand and relate to this idea of starting small and then growing from that. And hopefully, you know, getting even like my habits, my three habits that I do, I still only do them for five to 10 minutes, but I do them every day. And I feel those benefits and I feel the difference from doing them every day. If I tried to do it an hour of yoga every single day, I would never do it. So it's much better to be on my yoga mat and move my body for just 20 minutes every day and actually do it every day and stay consistent. That's when you see progress and that's when you see results. Okay. So that is the two minute rule. The next thing um, that I want to talk about, it's really brief. It's just kind of like a habit formation timeline. So it's just a little statistic. Basically, um, it takes an average of 66 days to form a new habit. So that is why I'm putting so much emph emphasis on consistency, starting small, and also patience, okay? That's super important. Patience when forming habits. It doesn't happen overnight. You might fail, you know, you might stop doing your habit for three days in a row and you might beat yourself up, but that's not conducive to progress. You just have to forgive yourself and then even scale it back. So if you, you know, if you didn't start with the two minute rule and you tried to start with 10 minutes and you realized, hmm. I can't do this, go back to two minutes and just stay with two minutes until you can do it consistently. Once you can do it consistently for one or two weeks, then you can go to five minutes. Once you do five minutes for two weeks, then you can go to 10 minutes, right? So be patient. It takes on average 66 days to form that habit. And if you try to go too big and you break that habit, it's going to take longer, right? So just Start small and find reassurance in the fact that it does take time and be patient. Be patient with yourself. Okay. The next thing is what are the challenges that we often face when trying to form a habit and how can we overcome those challenges, those obstacles? So the most common obstacles um, to habit formation are, well, lack of motivation right? A lot of us struggle with motivation and then time constraints. So my tips for overcoming those types of challenges are um, setting realistic goals, right? So maybe at the beginning, you can only try one habit. Two might be too much for you. So just go with one. Maybe at the beginning, you can only do two minutes, right? Instead of five. So be realistic, really just say to yourself, okay, what can I realistically do right? Because then that will help you with the motivation. We lose motivation when we're unrealistic with our goals and we fail. You know, failure is the biggest killer of motivation because once we fail, we say, oh, why did I even try? I can't do that. And then you, you lose that excitement. But when you start really small, you can say, oh, I actually did that. And maybe I can do more next time. But just be realistic with yourself at the beginning. And always. <laughs> um, and then another thing, the time constraints, you know, start small, start with a short amount of time. I've said that a lot, but I just want to keep reiterating it because it's super important. 
Another thing that helps with overcoming the challenges of forming a new habit is finding an accountability partner. So an accountability partner is someone who holds you accountable. What that means is if you say to your friend or your mom or your partner, hey, I'm going to start studying Spanish every day for five minutes. Can you make sure I do that or check in with me? They hold you accountable, right? They say, are you doing that? Or even <clears throat> find someone who wants to do it with you. Maybe they want to do a different habit. Sorry. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. So maybe um, your friend wants to do a different habit, but it doesn't matter as long as you have someone kind of holding your hand and supporting you through that, keeping you accountable, that can really, really help. So that's another tip. And then the last one is kind of creating a supportive environment. Now, that can mean whatever it means for you. That can mean creating a supportive environment for yourself creating a supportive environment within a friend group, but basically just create an environment where you have the best chance for success. So making sure that you put away distractions, making sure that you have accountability partners, um, making sure that you know, you're know you setting realistic goals. So really before you start trying to form any new habit, you should make sure that your environment, your surroundings, are going to give you the best chance of success before you even start. So maybe even make a plan of like what habit you want to do, how long you want to do it, what days you're going to do it, which other habits are you going to stack with that habit so that you make sure that you do it. What is your cue going to be? Are you going to set alarms on your phone, reminders on your calendar? What is your reward going to be? Are you going to you know have a nice breakfast after, make yourself a cup of tea, like think of all those things before you start so that you really have it clear in your mind, which is going to make it much easier for you and hopefully increase your chances of successfully implementing that habit into your life. And my last tip is super important, progress tracking and reflection. So we want to see our results because that's really motivating when you can actually see on a piece of paper or visually in some way your progress and then you can reflect on it you can say whoa like look at that look how amazing i am and that's such a good motivator and a reason to keep going or if you've been really struggling with implementing your new habit maybe the progress tracking will help you reflect on hmm, okay, so I missed my habit this day because of this other event, or hmm, Tuesdays aren't working good for me, let me try Wednesdays instead, right? So when you see something laid out in front of you and you track it in some way, it makes it easier to reflect. <clears throat> so yeah, basically um, you can use different methods for tracking your progress. One of them um, it's really simple. It's from the book, Atomic Habits. It's literally taking a piece of paper and creating a grid, like a table. And then on the, sorry, I'm remembering this just from memory. So give me a second. On the left-hand side, you write all your habits. So for me, that would be, um, for example, studying Spanish, yoga, meditation, journaling. That goes on the left side. And then across the top, you write the days but you write the dates, one, two, three, four, first. So we're on the 1st of April today. Well, that's the day that I'm recording. It's not going to be the day that I'm uploading, but let's just pretend. So we would say April 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, and each row is a day. And then you have your habits on the left. So what you would do is it's so, so simple. If you do your habit, you put a cross or a tick or whatever you want, a heart, any symbol in the box. And once you have a month, you can look and say, whoa, like, look at all the consecutive days that I did. And that's a great way to a really rudimentary way to track your habits. Um, and then I, I think I remember in the book, he says, try not to ever miss a habit more than once. So like more than one consecutive day. So like if I miss journaling on Wednesday, it's okay, but don't miss it on the Thursday. Um, 
So yeah, that's just one super easy and simple way to track your habits on a piece of paper. Um, the next one is journaling. So you can write down like today I did my blah, blah, blah. Um, or you can use if you're, you know, a techie person or you just prefer things digitally, you can use some habit tracking apps. So the ones that I would recommend you have like click up. Click up is it's like one of the highest rated productivity and habit tracking apps. That's a good one. Um, if you're more into like games to motivate you, there's an app that's gamified. So it's, you know, designed kind of as a game to help motivate you. That one's called Habitica or Habitica. I don't know I'm, if I'm pronouncing it right, but that's game based and that's a habit tracking app as well. So those are two habit tracking apps. So yeah, basically in conclusion, um, when you want to form habits, it's really important to start small. Make sure you have everything really clear in your mind about what your cues are going to be, what your rewards are going to be, what habits are you going to stack? How are you going to keep yourself accountable? How are you going to track your progress and reflect? Um, and I just really want you guys to take away from this that it's it's really just about starting small. And small little changes can have huge results. You'd be very surprised on, you know, with how much you can change with just small little da daily habits, right? The key is consistency and daily, if possible. Um, and yeah, I just... I would love to hear from you in the comments what you liked about this episode. If you thought it was useful or helpful, let me know what habits you're going to try and implement into your life and just let me know how it goes. I'm really excited to hear from you guys. Please, please read the book if you can, because this short episode of me talking about the main points, you know, it's nothing in comparison to all the detail of the book. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. Thank you guys so much for listening. As always, let me know what you want to hear in the next episodes. Um, like always, you can find this either on Spotify or YouTube. So if you're on YouTube um, and you want to just listen to me, you can go and check out my podcast, English with Gemma, on Spotify. And if you're on Spotify and you want to go to my YouTube channel, that's also English with Gemma. And finally, my Instagram is also English with Gemma. It's pretty easy. It's just English and my name. So you can't really, can't really miss me. All right, guys, I hope you have a lovely day and good luck with starting your habits. You can do this. If I can do it, you can do it. Thank you so much for watching and happy learning. Bye.